How do I write my curriculum vitae as a pharmacy student? What is your best advice for writing a CV as a healthcare student? Hi everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm Dr. Jessica Louie and I love helping burned out pharmacists and healthcare professionals reset their lives, clear the clutter and simplify so we can all own our time and thrive in life. Make sure that you're subscribing to our YouTube channel and getting the resources, workshops, and online courses that you need to thrive in life, all linked below. Today we're talking about how to write your curriculum vitae, also known as a CV for pharmacy students. Now you know I've been there. I'm an associate professor at a school of pharmacy. I've written many CVs over the years since I graduated in 2013. And I have some tips and advice for writing an effective CV curriculum vitae for your residency fellowship application process or job application process. You can also get our templates for CV and letter of intents linked below as well as our online course to really be successful at writing these for your postgraduate training opportunities known as residency or fellowship. So you might be asking, you know, what is a CV curriculum vitae to begin with? Why are we not writing a resume? A curriculum vitae is really to showcase someone's prior experiences, qualifications, education, and background when you're submitting an application for some type of job or residency fellowship application. And the simplest way to describe why it's different than a resume is because it's much more detailed and longer length. And a lot of healthcare people, especially pharmacists, prefer to receive a CV so that they have that detailed information and it's much longer than one page. So the first step in writing a great CV is gathering all the information that you want to include in it. A lot of times this information is scattered all around on our computers and paperwork. And this means gathering information on our past education, our past licenses, you know, what's the exact license number, when does it expire, our past work history, you know, what was the name of the organization, who was our supervisor, what were the daily responsibilities or projects we encountered in this work experience, what are some of our IPPE or APPE rotations, you know, the preceptor name, their credentials, responsibilities and projects we completed on these different rotations, any leadership history, what was our role, what are some of the defining points or responsibilities we led as a leader, what are research and publication history, what projects have we worked on, what was our role in that research, our presentation history, so the names of the presentations, being willing to discuss these presentations, any professional service, whether that's community service, co-curricular activities, organization affiliations, what organizations are you a member of or a leader within. And it's important to gather all of this information to begin with because it might be scattered on different files and in different papers. And then it makes the writing process for your CV so much easier once you have all this data to use in your CV. Remember that updating your CV is a continual process. We're not gonna do it once in our life and then use the same one going forward. We wanna update it. I highly recommend you're updating it quarterly or at least annually. And by updating it continually, then if something occurs where you do want to apply to a new job that you were previously never considering, or if you wanna to apply to a scholarship or something else that requires a CV, it's pretty easy to update in a few minutes versus updating the last like five years of things that happened to you. The next step is downloading your CV template. So you can click the links below to download your CV template that I use. I personally like to use a Word document to use the same font and the same style throughout, and then you can customize that to your own preferences. It's really important that you're able to edit it on a file that's pretty easy to use, pretty familiar with you. And that's why I don't really like using graphic design software like Canva or Photoshop because it can be more cumbersome to edit later on. Now you just start typing into the template and you don't need to worry about the formatting right now. It's important to get the data in and then format it later. A few notes are to think about the header and footer. It's great so that you can write your name on either the header or the footer, the page number, and when it was last updated. And this is important in case it ever gets printed out from the computer and then the pages get misaligned with one another. 
In terms of your personal information, I do not like to include certain things for privacy. So including you know, contact information is great with an email, a phone number, but you don't need to include your full address. And I see this done very often. And I think this is a privacy and security point that is concerning because you have no idea how many people are viewing your CV, your curriculum vitae, if it's getting sent around to other people, how many people in an online portal are seeing it, and they really do not need to know exactly where you live. So I limit that to a city and state because they can always ask your adapt address or your PO box later on. It's important to be as specific as possible. Remember that whoever is reading your CV cannot read your mind. And a lot of us, especially working in healthcare, are really humble. And we need to be very confident in what we've accomplished in our life, in our work life, and show that on our CV. We need to understand how to be confident and detailed in our written words because a lot of times your CV along with your cover letter or letter of intent is one of the only things that someone's gonna see in the hiring process. And it's important that you stand out in that process so that you can get to the in-person or the virtual interview where they can really get to know you a lot better. In regards to references, you really don't wanna be putting a lot of personal information from multiple different people on your references. I personally prefer to say available upon request. And then if you know an organization does ask for your references, the human resources department asks for those references, then you can customize who you're gonna to send to them, usually three to five names, and then also give a heads up to all the people that you're handing out their information to that they might receive a phone call or an email about the specific organization, the specific job opportunity, so that they're not surprised out of the blue that they were listed as a reference for you. Remember that you're always honest in your CV. You don't wanna make things up that did not happen. People can definitely check what you've put on your CV, so please be honest and fair in it. Make sure that you're grabbing at least three to five editors for your curriculum vitae. It's important that we're just continuing to learn and grow in that process of editing and improving ourselves. Those were some simple steps to getting started with your curriculum vitae as a pharmacy student. Make sure to grab your free downloads and invest in yourself. If you want even more help on your curriculum vitae or a letter of intent, we have an online course linked below as well. And you can watch these videos to study in pharmacy school and address burnout and simplifying in your own life. Until next time, spark joy.